It's 2019 and the world is so connected, sometimes it feels like there's no excuse to be alone. Like, thanks to technology, for example, we're in touch with literally everyone. From our relatives across the world, to the cute guy around the corner, to even the rock himself. And popular shows show us that regular people hang out with their friends all the time. Like, promising to share every intimate moment together. Let's, like, do everything together. Yeah, no duh, like, all our first together, like, our first kiss. Obviously. Yeah, no duh. Or appearing out of nowhere to save each other from bullies. And you can't forget friends itself, where they're your BFFs, roommates, and future baby daddies. So with all these friendship-heavy apps and stories, it can be easy to feel like you're the odd one out if you're not hanging out with someone 24-7 or fighting off invites every weekend. But hold up. What if it's normal to feel lonely? Do you ever feel lonely? Yeah, I do sometimes. Do you ever feel lonely? I do. So how many close friends would you say you have now? A good three, maybe? Do you ever feel lonely? Um, yeah, sometimes on lonely days and lonely nights. It's not an everyday thing, but like when it does happen, it's kind of like heavy. It turns out loneliness is increasing across the country, with over half of Americans reporting that they feel left out or alone. And younger generations are feeling this more than others, even though we're the ones who are supposedly the most connected. So why are we so lonely? I'm about to talk to Daniel Russell. He's one of the co-authors of the UCLA Loneliness Study, which is basically a preeminent method of determining individual loneliness. Why are so many people lonely? Loneliness occurs when your relationships with others, such as close friendships, mm -hmm. don't meet your expectations. Does that mean we should bring down our expectations from our friends? Would that make us happier and more content? <laughs> well, that may be true for some people, and, uh, and, and, it, and one of the issues may be that some people may have unrealistic expectations. And lately, social media takes a lot of flack for causing feelings of isolation. Would you say that's true? In these large studies, there's not a very strong relationship between social media use and loneliness. And if you think about going off to college, well, social media can help you keep in contact right. with your from where you came from. So that may actually help uh, abate loneliness. But then if you're seeing a bunch of people online hanging out with friends and you're not, maybe that could create feelings of isolation. That's right. That's right. It could lead to serious mental health issues, I heard. Right. And being lonely can certainly lead to depression. And what's the best way to address that if someone might be sensitive to being called lonely? Suggesting that they may need help but don't label them as being lonely. Oh, like you the know? L word. Yes. Right, right, the L word, yes. <laughs> Since I just moved to New York, I wanted to be proactive in battling loneliness myself. So I enlisted two of my coworkers on my quest to make new friends on a friendship app called Bumble BFF. We took similar profile photos and after three days, we compared our matches. Virginia matched with 45, CJ matched with 34, and I matched with 39. So what is your secret, Virginia, <laughs> to getting so many matches on this app? I actually think the thing that really worked for me was that my photo was me having my head, head tilted to a little bit, like to the left. And uh, I know that that's mine weird. Mine is tilted too. Oh, really? Oh, mine is not. Mine is you're straight like on. So I feel like yeah. a tilted head looks friendlier, and so you're more likely to swipe on people. I mean, I swipe right on everyone. I think I was trying to diversify the people I matched with because most of my friends are writers and creatives. Mm -hmm. Do you Sometimes also think your identity influences, like how your experience was? Even on this app, as I was swiping on people and reading their bios, I mean, you can't avoid the bias that you have, so. Right. I mean, there were moments where I'd be like, you're yeah. from Mississippi, you don't necessarily look like me. I don't know if I want to take that chance. And then right. I would swipe left on them. Because it could be like a cultural difference. For sure. Yeah. I'm queer. You're queer. So right. I don't think anyone the dating app like saw that photo and was like, oh, she gay. Right. Like, right. I think it was, <laughs> I think it That's was like, the thought process with the voice. <laughs> right, and there's never any like good way to drop that into a conversation if you're mm -hmm. talking to friends. Like, right. on the dating apps, you can talk about that. But, yeah. and like queer women often do on the dating apps. I don't care if my friends, how my friends identify, but mm -hmm. I would like to have that sort of layer of people who don't want to be Stay friends away. with queer people to just like get not swipe right on yeah. me. So, Ultimately, Virginia, you would use it for yourself. Mm -hmm. Would you recommend it for everyone else? 
Yeah, I think so. It just It's a matter of how you approach it. I think if you're an introvert, it could be useful because you mm -hmm. can slowly ease into these conversations. What about you, CJ, would you? That's kind of hard. I think finding meaningful, meaningful connections on an app is difficult, mm -hmm. but finding meaningful connections at all in New York is difficult, mm -hmm. so. Yeah, I mean, if it works for you, go for it, and there's no harm in trying, right? <laughs> and speak of the devil, my favorite person just bumbled me back. Oh, nice. She said, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> <laughs> well, deep. <laughs> right? To help us better understand the nuances of the app, Bumble CMO Samantha Fulgham came in for a chat. And speaking of the badges, I just uh, did like a playful test run with some of my coworkers. One of them is queer, and she was wondering why there's no badge for your orientation. Yeah. Right now on Bumble, we have 70 genders to identify as, but still on BFF, it's we allow only we allow our users to only do same-sex matches, so women can only see uh -huh. women and men can only see men. Um, but I think we're, we're adding new badges every day, and I think that's more user feedback that helps us right. innovate. And do you know what your success rate is, or like how do you measure success? Is it like real life meetings, yeah. or? I mean, I think that the definition of success on Bumble is different for everybody. Some people need a new best friend, some people move somewhere, or army spouses. Mm -hmm. Your spouse is overseas, yeah. and none of your friends are going through that. So you get on right. Bumble BFF, and you can find other women going through the same things you are. What do you say to criticisms then that social media can further isolate people who are rejected or who don't have a great experience? Yeah, I mean, I feel like if you're using technology socially, it can either increase or decrease the feeling of loneliness, where if you're using it to connect and to maintain existing relationships, that can definitely decrease the feeling of loneliness. But mm -hmm. if you're using it to completely replace the offline interactions that will increase your feeling of loneliness. Do you think this kind of technology or a friendship app can help people conquer loneliness? You know, there's a stigma with adults finding new friends. It's common to think that you have enough friends and you know, I think right now we're in an epidemic of loneliness and mm -hmm. I think Bumble BFF can certainly be a solution for that. So using apps to find friends is becoming more normal, but depending on factors like your identity, it's clearly not always easy. So I decided to test out the real life version of matchmaking apps with speed socializing. Some interactions were awkward. You're from Asia? Yeah, I'm from Asia. Is it on yet? Yeah, I just got here and I don't know anyone. You don't know anyone? How did you hear about it? I looked it up on the internet. I said find some socializing events. Some were with dudes. Do you use like dating apps or like friendship apps Ooh, to meet I, people? I tried and my experience has been so, so bad. And others had already tried apps. How do people do it? Like, I mean, you have apps. Like, I tried Bumble BFF. <laughs> I tried Bumble BFF too. I got changed. Really quickly. Why? I think people lie about whether why they're on there. So like they'll be on BFFs if they're not really on there for BFFs. It's strange. If there's one thing I learned, it takes a lot of energy to make friends. Just putting yourself out there and keeping the conversations going. And it's also clear that loneliness is a real issue. Like a lot of people are trying to make connections. And it's really a matter of finding the solution that works for you. Whether it's being on an app, on the internet, coming out in real life. There's no one size fits all, which is what makes it so hard, but also in a way it can be fun if you put yourself out there.